In this video, I will share five programming languages that you should consider learning in 2021. In the video, I will share the companies that use these languages, the median salary that you might expect, and the applications for each programming language, along with the reasons for why you might consider learning those specific languages. Without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the tech series. My name is Luba and I'm a former product manager and a software engineer in Silicon Valley, and I'm super excited to share these five programming languages with you. Of course, it's worth mentioning that a programming language is just a tool and it's a matter of what are you trying to become a domain expert in? What are you trying to build? What are you trying to do with the programming language? Number five on the list is Rust. Rust is a multi-paradigm language designed for safety and the coolest thing about Rust is its memory management. Rust is really great because it manages your memory during the compile time, which actually guarantees memory safety. And this is why Rust has been extremely popular lately and is actually number one most loved language by the developer community in the world according to Stack Overflow's survey. Because Rust is such a performing language, Amazon on web services, AWS uses Rust for performance sensitive components such as EC2 and Lambda. Companies that use Rust besides Amazon, of course, are Dropbox, Coursera, Figma, and Discord. Rust, similar to Go, is associated with $130,000 per year as a median salary that you can expect as a developer with Rust expertise and low level programming knowledge language expertise in the US. I thought I'd include Rust because of its growing popularity, because people love using the language, it has very simple to understand paradigms, and it's very safe and efficient to use. Number four is Kotlin. Kotlin was developed by the JetBrains team in an attempt to create something better than Java. Some companies that use Kotlin are, as I've mentioned, Airbnb, Coursera, Uber, Pinterest, and Postmates. I included it on the list because besides developing Android apps with Kotlin, you can also use it for backends and because it has a certain set of advantages. It has a good compiler, it is very efficient, it doesn't have any raw types, and there is always a lack of Android developers. Whenever I was at any type of job career fair or any type of conference or talking to my friends at a variety of Silicon Valley startups, there has always been demand in Android developers. And whenever people wanna get into mobile development, they're always excited about creating iOS apps. And Android is just this like sad little brother that everyone knows that they will eventually have to develop an Android app, but uh, companies always prioritize iOS. As a result, there is a lack of expertise in the Android space and to develop on Android, if you decide to become a professional uh, in the mobile space, you need to know Kotlin because Kotlin is taking over the Java share of Android development. Kotlin developers are also really well paid. Uh, it's on the same ballpark as Rust developers, the language number five on the list. Uh, it's $130,000 a year is the median salary that you can expect if you are an Android or a Kotlin developer in the US. I'd also like to share a simple framework that you can use while deciding which programming language to pick. And for this, I'm giving credit to my friend Stepan Poronashvili, who was a staff software engineer at Airbnb and at Facebook. He dissected it to a few very simple questions, which I think perfectly eliminate certain languages. Do you need extreme efficiency? Like, how are you managing your memory? How are you expecting your code to compile? that would eliminate a bunch of languages. Do you need a math level proof that your code will work as expected? For that, you probably need extremely strong type system. Do you work as a part of a big organization, a big environment? Because if your company is using a particular language stack, then you should probably not deviate too far out of it because things are written in a specific way. Probably a bunch of custom tools have been developed. And again, that will eliminate a bunch of options. Do you need concurrency? There are only very few languages that do concurrency excellently. So again, that would create certain elimination. Is your problem in a domain where the ecosystem of the domain might be really strong. A good example of that is Python and machine learning. So for instance, 
Python has an extremely vibrant community of machine learning developers and a ton of different frameworks that are developed specifically for that. And so as a result, you probably don't want to deviate too far out from that ecosystem because it's so useful and so powerful. And last but not least, of course, optimize for effectiveness. You probably want to know a language that will make you very, very effective in the output that you can create. If you're a startup, you should probably optimize for the next 12 months. If you're a big company, be a little more forward thinking two, three years, which language is gonna make your ecosystem effective, which language is gonna make your systems bulletproof. That's something that you should definitely think of optimizing for. And of course, if you already know a certain set of languages and whatever you're trying to learn is completely, completely different and will slow you down, you should think, is that the most effective use of your time? You can check out Stepan's essay in the description of this video below. Check the full version. Um, he writes a ton of other great pieces on programming and on software engineering, so I generally recommend checking out him out as an author. Number three is Swift. Since its announcement in 2014, has been extremely popular. And it's been extremely popular because creating iOS apps has never slowed down since the beginning of App Store in 2008. iOS has always been hot, will continue being hot. Every company, as I said, for Kotlin, will try to penetrate the mobile space and companies almost always start with iOS app instead of the Android app. Because iOS apps are developed using Swift, um, you will likely not have a shortage of job opportunities if you were to become a Swift developer. To name a few companies that use Swift, Airbnb, Pinterest, Slack, Facebook, Honestly, anything that has, any company that has an iOS uh, mobile app is most likely already switched to Swift. Swift developers can expect receiving a median salary of $125,000 a year in the US. Besides that, Swift actually has a pretty high barrier to entry because to develop using Swift or to develop for macOS or iOS, you one need to have Mac ecosystem, so a Mac computer. You also have to have a developer account for which I believe you have to pay $200. Swift is a pretty easy to use language compared to Objective-C. So if you are interested in mobile, I would highly, highly recommend taking a look at Swift. And we're nearing the top of our list. Number two is Python. Python is becoming extremely, extremely popular. I mean, it's always been on the rise of the, its popularity and now it's kind of trying to beat JavaScript in its popularity. I'm revealing number one in this list. Python is generally a very versatile language. Because machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, data processing is becoming more and more in demand and more and more popular, Python is usually the language of choice in that community and domain expertise. Python is also extremely versatile because it can be used for web applications, it can be used for data pipelines and data processing. It's very often used by big companies to write scripts, to write any type of deployment checks. And if you are a complete beginner, Python is a very easy language to start with. It's very readable, super easy to understand. It's very efficient. And if you are planning to do any type of software engineering job interviews anytime soon, I would highly, highly recommend Python as a language of choice in a technical interview. Python is also the third most loved language by the developer community in the world. So obviously you shouldn't take that lightly. That's pretty amazing. And Python developers in the US can expect a median pay of $120,000 a year. Pretty good. Naming a few companies that use Python, Instagram, Shopify, Amazon, Dropbox, Airbnb, and probably every single big company that you've heard of in some capacity uses Python. So it's an extremely powerful and versatile language. And we came to our place number one. Number one, you might have already guessed it, is JavaScript. JavaScript is only becoming more and more popular with every year. There is a thousand different frameworks that you can use with JavaScript, and I'm only seeing JavaScript becoming more and more in demand. 
And of course, depending on what you're trying to do with the language, if you're trying to start your own company, if you're becoming an entrepreneur, JavaScript is an amazing and powerful language because there is so many different things that you can do with it. You can create web apps, use React, let's say, on the front end and Node.js on the back end. You can create mobile apps with it using React Native. JavaScript is, of course, known for its ability to add interactive elements to web applications and browsers. You kind of got it. You can do so many different things with JavaScript. And if there was one single language that I would recommend knowing, especially if you're trying to develop your own products, it would be JavaScript because of how versatile it is. JavaScript, according to Stack Overflow, is also the most popular language in the developer community. JavaScript is used by companies like Microsoft, PayPal, Dropbox, Postmates, Uber, Airbnb, for my um, Eastern European developers company, we're constantly getting requests for JavaScript developers. So you can only tell how popular the language has become and it's only, it's only kind of at the start of its popularity, I think. Some of the awesome advantages are of JavaScript are the fact that it can run directly in the browser. You can test out JavaScript code in the browser. It's pretty simplistic. It again has a ton of different add-ons and frameworks for every single taste. And a great part is that JavaScript developers are still very well paid at $112,000 in the US according to Stack Overflow. Definitely a fantastic language to pick up. And again, if you're in the process of job interviews, JavaScript is also a pretty great language to do your technical interview questions in. Thank you so much everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear from you. What language are you planning to learn in 2021? New year, new us, new skills. I'd love to hear that in the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos in the tech series and bye for now.